from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Kahane with Wikibon Senior Analyst Stu Miniman. We have breaking analysis for you here today on the Cube. Yesterday, HPE acquired SimpliVity for six hundred fifty million dollars. Today, we're going to cover a why HPE made this acquisition, b how it's going to affect the ecosystem and customers, and c who the winners and the losers are going to be. So, Stu, let's dig into it. What's the news here? Yeah, uh, Sam, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we've watched SimpliVity uh, since they were basically in stealth. Uh, for, for those that don't know SimpliVity, uh, they're a hyper-converged infrastructure uh, company located right in Westboro, Massachusetts, which is you know in our backyard, Sam, right on the 495 loop. Uh, lots of storage talent here in, in Massachusetts, uh, and you know HPE uh, being you know still the leader in revenue for servers. Uh, you know hyper-convergence is something that they have some offerings, um, but uh, you know really felt that. They they needed to uh, really energize what they were doing. So, you know, buying you know one of one of the leading companies uh, in the space. SimpliVity's got you know uh, a track record. They've got a number of customers. Uh, they've got uh, activity going on in the marketplace. So, this uh, will help accelerate uh, HPE's activities here. Okay, and why is this so important? Why is hyperconverged infrastructure? So important, such a hot topic right now. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, a few things, it, and it's a little bit of a complicated, uh, you know, piece. We can't go into too much. Uh, you know, David Floyer, our CTO, and myself, been writing about what we call server sand, mm -hmm. and in many ways, we feel you know, storage as it traditionally was known, uh, you know, it, it, it is changing forever with things like flash, uh, distributed software architectures, uh, what hyperscale players are doing. Uh, the traditional thing of just buying storage as a standalone piece uh, is dying. So storage. Storage is part of the platforms, and hyperconverged infrastructure is one of the ways. Uh, if I'm building infrastructure to be able to do that, um, it's storage and compute, and a little bit of networking, a lot of software, really to try to simplify what's happening in my environment. As a matter of fact, I mean, simplicity. You think about it. You know, simplification is part of their their name and their DNA, and what they were trying uh, trying to do uh, for their customers. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to dig into the why. You know, yeah. HP is the revenue leader in servers. Yeah. Why do they need this? Why did they make this acquisition? Yeah, uh, great, great question, Sam. So I mean, HPE has you know plenty of storage solutions. Uh, the one that we've tracked the most is of course three par, which they bought back in 2010. Uh, it's been a great acquisition for for HP. Uh, now HPE. Uh, I've seen some people saying in the marketplace, can SimpliVity do uh, for HP in this space what three par did for them in storage? Um, Hyperconvergence is growing very rapidly. Uh, what we're tracking it. At, at Wikibon, you know, it's over two billion dollars. Uh, you know, last year it's growing at you know, you know, very high rates of growth. You know, kind of fifty to one hundred percent for most solutions out there. Dell EMC. If you look at Dell buying EMC, which of course was the largest acquisition in the technology space, you know, hyperconverged infrastructure was one of the top reasons that Michael Dell wanted EMC. Uh, they have. Ownership of VMware, which is the vSAN product line. They had Scale.io, which they had acquired, and they have the VCE group, which has helped to package and build solutions out of what they were doing. So, you know, you've got this kind of three-headed monster out of the, the Dell Technologies family uh, that is attacking hyperconverged very strongly. Uh, it's the vSAN stuff, it's the Scale.io stuff, and they're an OEM of Nutanix, who of course IPO'd back in 2016. Hewlett Packard to be able to combat that um, really had you know some of their own solutions which uh, were uh, legacy from uh, the left hand product line really strong product for many years but it was you know storage virtualization before that existed it was a virtual storage appliance before that existed uh, and they would position it as hyperconverged before that existed but it's a little tough to reposition some of the older technologies and, and make that change so having a product that was you know purpose built for hyperconverged uh, you know puts HPE in that space. They also have uh, their Synergy product line, which is a composable. Uh, they're partnering with Microsoft on Microsoft Azure. So there's a lot of solutions where SimpliVity can now come in and work with this. What's a little bit interesting is today, the SimpliVity solution uh, you know, works on Dell servers, works on Lenovo servers, works on Cisco servers. Today, it doesn't actually work on the HPE ProLiant servers, but by the time this deal closes in April, uh, they've said it will uh, be there, and then there will be, over time, just SimpliVity software integrated more and more into you know, a broader set of HP offerings. 
So could this space be overhyped a little bit? So Nutanix is valued at over $4 billion, mm -hmm. and then Simplivity just sold for $650 million. Uh, what are your thoughts? Could yeah. it be overhyped? So uh, at Wikibon, Sam, you know, we always said that you know, there's this wave that's coming, um, and it's not about hyperconvergence. Hyperconvergence uh, is an interesting term. There, there's some interesting things happening there, but it's really about building distributed architectures uh, and, you know, some of these new components, like how Flash is really changing architectures, how new applications are being built. Uh, so look at what the cloud guys, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are doing. Um, you know, Nutanix, you know, reached escape velocity. They IPO. They're doing well. They're still over four billion dollars of market cap, even after a little bit of a hit this morning. After Simplivity getting bought for only six hundred and fifty million. Look, I, I want to say, you know, congratulations to the folks at Simplivity. You know, a lot of hard work went into this. They got about two x um, of the VC money that they raised in in uh, w in the acquisition, and the multiple of revenue is somewhere in the three to four range. Um, we haven't finished our kind of 2016 uh, revenue, looking at everything from 2015. Simplivity had done about 95 million, uh, and that's uh, they're, they're starting to see more and more shift of what they were selling to be software only. Means that they weren't bundling in the hardware as part of it. Um, so it, it's definitely a growth market. Definitely something that if you look at HPE's reach with their customer base, talked about all their servers that mm -hmm. they have. They've got strong storage expertise out there, and their channel and their go-to market. They should be able to accelerate this and get this into a lot of customers customers here in 2017. Okay, so from speaking of the customers, how are they going to be affected, you know, and how is the ecosystem going to be affected as well? Yeah, so um, there is, is definitely, if I'm today a SimpliVity customer, uh, you know, HPE is given the assurance, you know, we're not changing the, the, the platforms or we're not changing everything. However, we know that they're going to port this software over to the, you know, HPE ProLiant servers. What does that mean? If I'm today looking at buying, say, a Lenovo server or a Cisco server or a Dell server and running SimpliVity, do I really want to sign up for that when I know later this year, next year, the, the strong push is going to be on the HP ProLiant? So uh, I'd love to see HP come out and say, hey, you know, we're strongly committed to software uh, and this ecosystem and growing it. Uh, I, I tend to think that they will focus more on uh, offering the full stack and that uh, while there's great opportunity for them to bring SimpliVity into a larger part of the market, that can shut them out of some of those opportunities in the other server uh, manufacturers where VMware with their vSAN, Nutanix uh, with their software are, are gaining a lot of traction. So it'll be an interesting transition year here in, in 2017, but overall it's good to see HP E, uh, you know, putting money, putting focus on this space. We already saw, you know, Dell's there, Lenovo's there, uh, Cisco. I think we'll talk a little bit more later. Um, you know, would love to see more as, as to how they're focusing on this space. Yeah, let, let's talk about it. You know, winners, losers. What's your take? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, Nutanix. Uh, as long as the market doesn't feel that uh, there's not enough opportunity here, with SimpliVity only getting six hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, you know, what does this mean overall? I uh, was talking to John Furrier, uh, of, of course, our, our anchor out uh, on the West Coast for Silicon, uh, uh, Silicon Angle. In their Silicon Valley Fridays, uh, they've been talking about a lot of the VC money has been pulling out of the infrastructure business. The, you know, the big guys are, are doing well. The cloud guys are threatening. Applications are taking a lot of that money. So with SimpliVity only going for $650 million, uh, it's not great for infrastructure companies uh, that are looking for investment, looking to grow in this space. Uh, there are a few startups in the hyperconverged infrastructure space that are still out there. Look at like uh, Maxta, uh, Diamante, uh, SpringPath at Cisco OEMs, uh, Stratoscale, which also has investment from Cisco, but it's out there. Um, there's a handful of other companies out there. It's not great swimming for them out there. Um, customers are looking for new and interesting things out there, but the investment uh, um, kind of marketplace isn't great for them out there, and there's not too many companies that could buy companies out there. Cisco's one, they've got an OEM relationship with SpringPath with their HyperFlex software. If that goes well, it would be expected that Cisco would buy that. But today, you know, Cisco has lots of storage partnerships, uh, and you know, it's not a strong relationship with Nutanix. As a matter of fact, Cisco kind of pushes Nutanix away, even though Nutanix works on the Cisco UCS. 
Um, so uh, I, I think it's kind of a, a mixed bag for the infrastructure players uh, and f you know for customers. Uh, it, it shows that you know th this marketplace just is maturing so fast. Um, you know, talk about kind of the explosion and discussion of hyperconverge. Uh, there's a little bit of grounding as we see consolidation, which we've been seeing in the infrastructure space uh, for many years now. Just more and more consolidation. Did you see this acquisition coming? Did you expect this to happen? So, uh, I you know, it was not surprising to see this acquisition. I think two years ago was the first rumor that we heard that HP, you know, back when it was mm -hmm. actually HP, was going to buy SimpliVity. The rumors of the numbers, um, it had been said that, you know, the C CEO, Doron Kempel, uh, was looking for 2 to $3 billion. Um, there are many that said if, if he had been offered, you know, that two to three billion dollars two years ago and he turned it down, well, you know, you missed a, a great opportunity there because they only sold for six hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, so um, it doesn't surprise me uh, that SimpliVity sold. Uh, there's a lot of pressure in the marketplace right now. Uh, Nutanix now out as an IPO, you know, in the public markets, you know, still growing and doing well. Uh, VMware coming on very strong in this space, um, you know, especially through the Dell Technologies partnership and VxRail uh, has been doing very well so far. Um, you know, Cisco is, you know, tough to partner with in this space and especially with the OEM relationship. It, it was one of the largest areas of growth for SimpliVity and if, if Cisco spent more effort on things like Hyperflex, it would be less opportunity for them. So, you know, the options are, could SimpliVity reach IPO? Revenue numbers were trending towards getting to an IPO. Don't know if that would have happened in 2017, but as we often see, uh, you know, when a company starts to think about an IPO, that's often the time that somebody swoops in and buys them. We saw EMC bought VirtuStream when they were looking at that kind of activity. There were plenty of rumors that Nutanix might get bought up, even rumors that HPE might have bought Nutanix. Uh, but at you know, the market cap that they had, obviously, if they could buy SimpliVity, for 650 million, rather than you know <laughs> over four billion dollars uh -huh. for Nutanix, uh, it, it is a uh, you know much more reasonable shot. Uh, and HPE believes that they have the internal resources, the the go-to-market reach to be able to take that and push it. So it wasn't really a surprise. Um, you know, I, I hope it turns out well uh, for the, for all those involved. Mm -hmm. So last question for you: What else do people need to know about this acquisition? Yeah, so uh, I, I think if in many ways, uh, Sam, I believe that, you know, we'll spend less time talking about hyperconverged infrastructure now. Uh, if you look, Nutanix uh, really talks about enterprise cloud. Uh, really like that messaging. We've been talking about, you know, do companies need a convergence strategy? No. Do they need a cloud strategy? Absolutely. You know, what am I turning into SaaS? What am I putting in the public cloud? What am I keeping in my environment? Uh, you know, we've been saying for years, companies should stop building data centers and let you a REIT. Uh, so, you know, companies like Equinix, the large service providers, uh, you know, hosters like Rackspace, uh, and the public cloud is a good place to live it. Um, infrastructure is changing rapidly. Uh, that's why, you know, Dell bought EMC, that's why HP's trimming down uh, to really focus on their knitting. Uh, so, you know, rapid changing in the infrastructure marketplace. Um, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, opportunities for customers uh, to rethink how they're doing things and make sure that they've got their strategies in order uh, so that they'll be ready to be more agile, faster, uh, and be able to uh, st stay more competitive. Stu, thank you. For more information on this acquisition, go to siliconangle.com. This has been Breaking Analysis. Thank you for watching theCUBE.